You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you for joining me on this Total Wellness Tuesday show, where we're going to be going over the five ways you can actually slow or reverse aging. And yes, you heard that correctly. There actually are ways, scientifically proven ways, to turn back time on aging. And one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is because in the past, I've spoken about these specific little end caps on the ends of our, essentially chromosomes, on the end of our DNA. They're called special nucleotide sequences, or better known as telomeres. And the best way I like to think of it as, and again, I didn't come up with this analogy, but I think it's a great one, the little plastic end caps on the end of your shoelaces that protect your shoelaces from essentially fraying or falling apart. And that's what these telomeres are. So think of the chromosome, think about every time your cells are dividing, that these telomeres have to ensure that that sequence of DNA is dividing and replicating correctly. So it would stand to reason, and this has now been proven, that the longer the telomeres or the stronger the telomeres, better your aging will be. And now they've done multiple studies. The first one, I should say the largest one, was actually done with over 100,000 patients. And what they found was that the people with the shortest telomeres tended to die a little quicker. I guess that's the the most politically incorrect way I could put it. And so the goal then from there would be, what can we do to ensure our telomeres stay as long and strong as they can throughout most of our life? Because as we age, those telomeres, every time those cells divide, so that's why, again, we don't want to become too catabolic as I've spoken about on previous Cabral concepts. So we don't want our cell division to happen too quickly. Where on the other hand, again, just remember, there's always good and bad to both sides. We don't also want those cells to metastasize or become malignant, which can be cancer-causing as well. So there's two sides to this equation, but the side with the telomeres actually becoming too short or shortening too quickly has actually led to more increased Alzheimer's, dementia, cancer, and certain types of disease related with aging. So when we've spoken about doing a telomere test in the past, what are we really talking about? Well, and I'll link that up in today's show notes, but simply, if you didn't listen to those shows, go back to episode 657, and that's the actual test to discover your own biological age. And what does that mean, the biological age? Well, it means like, let's just say, for example, you're 52 years old, okay? So that's your chronological age. That means you've celebrated 52 birthdays, okay? So our biological age, though, can be very different. We all know that we have friends, family, relatives, coworkers, or whatever it might be that are 52-year-olds as well, easy for me to say, and they look drastically different, right? So one person might look like they're aging faster. They just look maybe not as, they don't have as much vitality, so they just look a little older and act a little older. And then we have 52-year-olds that act quite young, maybe like their late 20s, early 30s. And the reason I like this little 52-year-old example right now, and the reason why it's kind of caught my head, is that I personally work with, and I'm actually very good friends with, that because I've worked with them for so long now, about a decade, of three particular clients who are exactly 52 years old. That's why I mentioned this. And I actually have a few other clients who are in their now about mid-60s to later 60s. And these handful of people, I'm just thinking about my mind right now, are unbelievably young, meaning that you could compare them, you could compare them realistically with someone in their early 30s, so about two decades younger, about 20 years younger. And they would not only be like outperform them in exercise and in cognitive ability and in healing and anti-inflammatory, all of those specific things. And they're able to do that because of very specific qualities and how they live their life. I'm sure genetics plays a small factor. There's no doubt about that. But we know 95% of our genetic expression does come from our lifestyle and our diet. So, of course, we want to talk about that as well. 
So on today's show, I want to simply give you five ways, you know, five ways that we can turn back the clock on aging. And there are now, and I feel very comfortable sharing this with you as well, there are multiple studies now. One is out of the University of California, San Francisco. This is a study showing that through, what's it actually called? It's called Diet, Meditation, Exercise Can Improve Key Element of Immune Cell Aging. So I'm going to go through a little bit of that study. There's also another one out of Stanford Medicine that's talking about telomere extension turns back aging clock in cultured human cells, study finds. So we're talking about how we can, not only we can do it through, let's call it scientific-based methods in a lab, but we can also now do it through certain lifestyle-based factors. And whether you ever decide to run a telomere test, which I'm going to link up, of course, in today's show notes. So everything for today's show notes, all these studies, everything, just go to stephencabral.com forward slash 662. I'll put all the links in there to where I do my own telomere testing because I've run my own. And I will also link up the one with the health coaching call. So you get private one-on-one guidance on how to essentially master your telomeres, meaning get them as long as possible through certain specific lifestyle parameters that are just built for you. Meaning like you'll have a conversation with your health coach after you get back your results. And my health coach, because of the study that they've done with me, will be able to actually teach you how to reverse that aging process. Now, there's a couple ways to look at this right before I get into these five ways right now. You can think of it this way. All right, if you're 52 years old, we'll just keep going with that example. And you came back and your telomeres were the age of, let's say, a 60-year-old. Okay, so that's not ideal. That means your biological age is actually a little older than your chronological age. We don't want that. We want you at 52 years old to come back with a biological age on a telomere test of, let's say, 42 years old, let's say a decade back. That, that's what we want. Now, I'll tell you this. Regardless, I think it's great to just run it so that you actually look at, uh, essentially what we're looking at is free radical damage. That's a big part of what we're talking about right now. Oxidative damage. What does that mean? Free radicals from stress, pollution, toxicity, poor eating, lack of sleep. We're going to go through those five factors. And of course, by using the reverse, you'll figure out why the telomeres are aging faster than they should be or shortening more than they should be. And what I want to do is this, is think of it two ways though. Even if you don't get the number that you want, let's say you're, again, a 60-year-old biologically, you can think of it two ways. One is you could say, okay, well, the next time I retest this in somewhere around eight months or nine months or so, because you need to give your body time to actually regenerate, turn over, and rejuvenate, is you can think of it a few ways. One is you can say, okay, I'm going to try to turn back the clock on my telomeres using something called totalomerase and increase in enzyme-based activity so we can lengthen those telomeres. Or, or what we can do is say, my number is 60 today at 52 years old. Well, let's have that number freeze in time so that when I'm 70 years old, my telomere length is still that of a 60-year-old. When I'm 75 years old, it's still that of a 60-year-old. When I'm 80 years old, maybe it goes to 65 years old. So do you see what I'm saying? So whether we can actually elongate it or not, even though we're showing that, we're showing it through clinical research. Again, University of California, San Francisco, life extension, we're looking at Stanford Medical School. So again, we can do that, but let's just say we can't. Let's just play devil's advocate. Not possible. Can't do it. Okay, well, again, then just freeze it in time. So again, my opinion is this. You're 52, you did a telomere test, and it shows you have a 60-year-old for chronological age or for biological age. Well, then that should then put the onus on you. It's time to get going. It is time to start working on anti-aging now. And that means getting to the ideal weight, rebalance of the body so that you become well again. And if those two things have already happened, now you work on the anti-aging, okay? Now you work on those specific parameters. So for everybody, whether you end up running your own telomere test or not, that's completely up to you. What I'm going to say is, whether you run or not, let's get started with how we turn back time, with how we slow the aging process, okay? So let's go over those five tips right now, or five ways to turn back aging. Okay, so the first one, this might come as no surprise, right? You know that it's going to fall somewhere on this top five is stress. Stress is probably the number one issue causing dis-ease in the body. It affects our nervous system. It affects our digestion. It affects our sleep. So it affects everything, right? It affects our body's ability to absorb nutrients and then it also breaks down the body faster. Well, there's a reason why when you do telomere-based testing and we're giving recommendations to people, I'm just going to give you the basic outline today. If you want your own custom-based protocol by working with a health coach for 30 minutes talking about the specific parameters, we'll link that up in the show notes today, but that's not for everybody. So let's give the everybody thing today. 
So here's the thing. When you were under stress, you were causing more free radical damage. You were causing more oxidative damage. You were causing higher levels of cortisol. Higher levels of cortisol show a few things. They, they do burn out nerves. They burn out neurons and they affect actual brain cells. So it actually shows that higher levels of cortisol burn out brain cells leading to dementia, leading to Alzheimer's and specific brain-based disease as well. But not to name autoimmune and many, many other factors, alopecia. There's a lot of factors, psoriasis, eczema. So why would that be? Well, the higher levels of cortisol is a stress hormone. It is creating oxidative damage. Your body is going through its nutrient storehouses, vitamin storehouses, namely B vitamins, zinc, vitamin C, glutamine at much faster rate. So what do we do? Well, what we need to do is really become self-aware. And that's what I talk about on my Mindset and Motivation Monday is become really self-aware to figure out what parts of your life are the most stressful, what people stress you out the most. And then work at it from two specific areas. One is trying to do as best as you can. I know it's not going to be perfect. As best you can to avoid the more stressful situations by you know removing your encounters with that. And then also then building up your resiliency through your own immune-based system, through your own psychological perspective of what, as well when you are in stressful-based situations. I'm going to give you a couple more tips as well when we talk about our rasanas, our asanas at the very end. And that's something that I'm looking forward to speaking with you as well, because that's about Ayurvedic-based medicine. Okay, so let's move on to number two. Number two is sleep. Sleep is crucial in terms of being able to heal the body, rejuvenate the body, and make sure we cut down on that overall stress and a sympathetic nervous system-based dominance that a lot of people live in through the majority of their day. And that's because we live in this Western mindset where more is always better. And if we're not always moving, then something's wrong. So my biggest thing with sleep is this, is letting people know that they have to start to establish a routine. This is extremely important in terms of stress as well. So the biggest thing I look for is, is a person getting more hours before midnight or the most hours they can before midnight? That should be at least two hours. So going to bed somewhere between 9 and 10 p.m., ideally, again, you're going to do your best, and waking up somewhere between 5 and 7 o'clock in the morning. I've gone through before how many hours are needed in terms of going to bed You know, for the ectomorph, the, the mesomorph, and the endomorph as well. But think of it this way. We're looking for pure, uninterrupted sleep. So just like in the, if you're someone who's stressed, you want to look at like high levels of cortisol, you could run an adrenal and hormone-based test. And again, I'll link all this up in the show notes. Or you can run what's called a here tissue mineral analysis, which would show higher levels of the calcium, the magnesium, if there's more stress in the body, and then how your body's adapting to that stress with the levels of sodium and potassium which are, again, are regulated by the kidneys, which are also regulated by a hormone called aldosterone. So those can be looked at in the adrenal and hormone test, as well as the hair tissue mineral analysis. And a lot of people, when we're looking at sleep, they say, well, I can't sleep. Or it's interrupted sleep, which means I wake up. They might say, I wake up every couple hours or at no matter what, at 3 a.m. in the morning, I seem to always wake up and then have a difficult time going back to sleep after that. So we're looking for uninterrupted sleep somewhere between seven and a half and nine hours or so per night, seven to nine hours, maybe lower towards the seven in the summertime, certainly a little bit more during the winter, during those rejuvenating based months as well. Really, really important. Okay. Number three is that we need to, and I've spoken about this many, many times before, but we need to find ways and that is to eat more of a Mediterranean based diet. So hopefully you tuned into my show before it was on a Friday review And I believe it was called The Foundation for All Diets. And again, I keep forgetting the name of that show where it should be at the top of my mind because it's so important. It means that no matter what diet you're following, the primal, the paleo, raw diet, uh, vegetarian, vegan, you name it, you want to use this as the foundation for all diets. It is the diet that has the most research behind it, that has the most clinical evidence, and also has the most unbiased evidence. Like we're really just looking at the blue zones. We're looking at the oldest longest lived people, healthiest people. That was on episode 637. So check that show out for sure. And it is actually called Use This as the Foundation for All Diets. Now, what are we really talking about with this Mediterranean diet? Well, in a nutshell, what we're looking for is somewhere between seven and nine plus servings of fruits and vegetables every day. Now, if you want to make the argument that you're trying to live a lower glycemic, lower sugar-based lifestyle, then I can support that. But you'll simply say, your fruit should be 
cranberries, blackberries, wild blueberries, raspberries, and basically I'm naming berries, right? Cherries, dark tart cherries. All of these things are extremely low glycemic, but they are also at the same time extremely high in what are called phenols or carotenoids or antioxidants. Now, it is these anthocyanins and all these beautiful bright colors that are actually protective to our cells. They're protective to our brain. Why? Well, they're really helping to reduce oxidative damage. Again, they're helping to reduce inflammation. So another way to think of it is if there's oxidative damage, there's also inflammation. So what we're talking about is is a, a term that's been coined in functional medicine called inflammaging. The more inflammation you have, the faster you are aging. Now, the easiest, best way to get rid of this inflammation is exactly what we're talking about today. The stress, okay, lowering that. The sleep, lowering that, or yeah, improving that, I should say, right? But improving the uninterrupted sleep. And then high antioxidants. And that to me means, it, honestly, listen to that episode because I'm not going to be able to do a 15-minute show on that today. But it's honestly as simple as getting two to three servings for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. Now, it might seem like a lot, but I make it easy on that particular podcast of how to really simply get those fruits and vegetables at specific times during the day. I'm telling you that it's honestly life-changing. It changed my life. That was one of the big things. Now, of course, no one thing changed my life, and that's what I try to preach, that there is no silver bullet. But I'll tell you right now, getting more high antioxidant, high phenol-based food, which is specific types of antioxidants, into my body gave my cells new fuel. Now, it didn't happen overnight, but as my cells started to turn over every 90 to 120 days, I got that much better and that much better and that much better. And now today, I live a life that I could only have once dreamed about. Never could have dreamed about this life that I'm living right now, that's for sure. And the reason is, I can tell you even at 16 years old, 15 years old, 14 years old, I did not have this much energy, did not have this much focus, did not have this much drive. There's no chance I can remember back to those days And I was, you know, I was an athlete in high school and I tried to study and do well in school and I worked jobs. And so I did things I did, but I didn't have this type of like vitality, this type of zest. I was moving through life, but I didn't have a lot of life in my body to the same extent. Now, of course, I was I was sick in the making, right? Like I I lived a very unhealthy lifestyle. So that's why I can tell you that the food you put in your body is the foundation. All right. Now, number four, I actually did a whole podcast on. I did a podcast and that was episode 594. I'll link that up in today's show notes as well. So we have 567 on telomere testing, 594 in this particular exercise I'm about to talk about, and 637 on how to live longer no matter what diet you're on by interjecting more of this Mediterranean way of life. Now, here's the interesting thing. I, I for one, like a lot of other um, exercise physiologists, exercise practitioners, personal trainers, certified strength and conditioning coaches, we don't promote a lot of long distance running. We don't promote a lot of long distance exercise. It's very interesting. But in terms of lengthening telomeres, it actually shows that a couple days a week of steady state cardio improved telomere length almost better than anything else. Very, very interesting. So I'm like, how can this be? So I start to look into the research because again, I always keep an open mind. I will tell you tomorrow. I literally will tell you tomorrow and own up to it. Hey guys, this seems to be working better. I honestly will do that because if I change it for myself, I'm going to change it for my family, my friends, and I'm going to change it for our entire community. So always know that for sure that I'll do that. But the interesting thing is this. In body transformation, slower long distance, or I shouldn't say long distance because I want to qualify that in a minute. Slower cardio, steady state cardio, which just means you run at the same pace or elliptical at the same pace or bike at the same pace for let's say 30 minutes, that is not the best way to transform your body. There's no doubt about that. Intervals, resistance training, metabolic type resistance training, which is what we do, that transforms the body better than anything else. And that, that's clinically proven. Like that's very, very straightforward without a doubt. But now we're talking about something different. So I have to open my mind and say, hey, we're not talking about body transformation right now. We're actually talking about cellular aging. So we can have an all for one approach. This is why, and again, I always remind myself of of this, no matter what I think, I have to understand that there's no all for one approach. So now what I'm really leaning towards is obviously always balance, right? Like every time I get away from Ayurveda, you know, and I get, I never get too far from Ayurveda, but every time I get away, I'm like, oh, they were right. They were right. They're always right. 
So we're going to talk about those uh, Rasinas in, in a few moments. But here's the thing. A couple days a week of going for 20 to 30 minutes, somewhere around 30 minutes if you can, which would be the equivalent for, to most people for doing like a 5K, about three miles of biking, jogging, you know, nothing abusive on the joints without a doubt. But if you can do that, you actually bring more oxygen to the body. And what it seems to do is this. It creates more of uh, aerobic, of course, not anaerobic, which we're getting a lot of times in intervals and our, our resistance training, but we're getting aerobic-based capacity. So we're building aerobic-based capacity. It just means we're pumping more oxygen into our cells, into our muscle tissues. That makes sense. Like, okay, we're creating more of an uh, aerobic-based environment, which is actually, then if you think of it, more of an alkaline-based environment. Now, again, I know our bodies control and regulate pH within the different departments of the body, but we're still bringing more oxygen, which does bring more life because in, in traditional Chinese medicine, they have this thing called qi. And in Ayurvedic medicine and, and yoga, they have this thing called prana. And we are circulating that life through our body when we're doing some of this cardio. So interesting, I know that I am really working hard to get two days a week of this cardio into my routine. And a lot of times it's after I do 20 minutes to 30 minutes of resistance-based work, then I'll do 20 to 30 minutes of cardio-based work. And that creates a nice little workout for me twice a week, trying to get this in to the best of my ability. And again, I'm, I'm getting better and better at doing that myself. So that's something I had to bring to you today as well. Really, really uh, impressed by that research. And again, overall with exercise, no matter what you're doing, typically it's going to be improvement unless you're overdoing it. How do you know if you're overdoing it? Simply run a hair tissue mineral analysis or run the saliva test, which is the adrenal plus hormone test. I do recommend four days a week of exercise if possible. That's more days than not. So you can do a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Take the weekend off if you'd like or do the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, if you have more time then. Take Monday off, do it Tuesday, Thursday. You know, you can come up with your own schedule. Of course, if you download the welcome package at stephencabral.com, then you'll get my, you know, my ideal week of working out as well. So that's, that's certainly a favorite. And now what is the last one today? The last one today is this. Are these things that I mentioned a little earlier, sometimes pronounced Rasana, the Ayurvedic way that I learned over when I was in India and Sri Lanka is Rasayana. And Rasayana is simply, well, Rasayana is, it's not simple at all. It is this beautiful detoxification based protocol that they use in Ayurveda. And at the same time, it's rejuvenating. So how do you do that? Well, I like to kind of hearken it to what my mentor shared with me and many, many other mentors as well, is what we're looking to do is constantly clean the ama, which in Ayurveda means toxins, out of the body while subsequently or simultaneously rejuvenating the cells. This can be done. It really can. And, and it's something that I do plan on once my new book comes out, make that a lot of my teaching for at least the next 12 months. So my goal over the 12 months is to really motivate people to actually just step forward, to actually start doing the work, even if it's a tiny step. I'm okay with that. I really am. Because I know one step leads to results, and those results then will lead to more motivation to do even more work. So that's going to be the big part of it. But the second is introducing people to these Rasayanas and introduce people to this lost, uh, this lost medical system that was the foundation for all medicine and still is to this day, which is Ayurvedic medicine. So we have something called Panchakarma, which is detoxification, and I'm not going to get through all of that today. But what we really need to do and what I'm talking about right now is balancing the body, okay? So the Rasayanas are detoxification through Panchakarma and things like sweating through infrared saunas and Epsom salt baths and sunbathing and walking out in the woods, you know, in nature and like soaking up those negative ions. And I'll get into more of that in the future. So that's a big part of that. But the other part is then also rejuvenating the body. And, and in Ayurvedic times, they use these Rasayanas as actual medicated herbs. And they're called medicated herbs and that's because herbs were actually used as medicine. So what does that mean? Well, they had these things called Chaiwan Prash and they have all of them based, I mean, they have literally formulas for uh, rejuvenating different parts of the body in terms of fertility. Uh, they have all, all sorts of different beautiful formulas. And again, I'll introduce you to many of those as well. But in modern day or how we look at it in the, let's just say 21st century or however you want to look at it, is that we can do that through providing the body with the minerals that it needs through a lot of those smoothies that I talk about, the high antioxidant formulas, getting your veggies at your lunch and your dinner, and then also doing that through your vitamins and your minerals. And you can do that, again, through a daily activated multivitamin, through the daily nutritional support, or whatever your favorite product is. And again, I shared research on this, that if you simply take a methylated, a good multi, not a multi from your local drugstore or 
you know, your discount bulk buying store. Not one of those, but an actual methylated based form of all your good vitamins in your minerals, meaning like they're chelated based forms. What you're going to actually get is typically an 8% increase in longevity right there. Then that's, that's, again, I've spoken about this research on previous shows. An 8% increase in longevity is about 6.7 years on your life. That's pretty impressive. I'll take that any day of the week. Happy to do that by simply doing my daily nutritional support shake every single morning. Like that's easy. I'm happy to do that. That's a fair trade in my opinion. But again, all I'm doing is using the powder and then I'm putting in my favorite, you know, smoothie recipes. And again, you can download our smoothie recipes completely for free just by going to any of the episodes. Just go to steamcabral.com forward slash 662 for today's show. And you'll be able to go to all of these specific links. So I'll give all of these links today. So I'll give you on the previous show on telomeres, I'll, we'll give you the exercise one, the Mediterranean based diet one, and then I'll link up to how to run your own telomere test. And then also link up how to do a health coaching call with a telomere test already included with that. We'll ship it out to you if you're interested in that as well. Completely up to you. Let us know how we can help. Love doing shows like this. This was actually one by popular request as well that I wanted to spend a little bit more time on. Hope you enjoyed the show. Please do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could help. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or any practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.